So Kristen, welcome to Pivotal Moments and tell us a little bit about yourself. Awesome. Ah. Thank you so much, Lolita. I am so excited to be here. Um, so the Cade Foundation is an organization simply supporting families overcoming infertility. That is our mission, that's our goal, that is that is what we do. So the way we do that is by supporting families through, um, through our grant, that's our, our number one focus making sure families are getting the funding that they need. Sometimes you just need that little extra, that little push to, to get to your, to get to the, to the home stretch, to get to that finish line. So we offer grants twice a year, um, every year in February and July, our, our grant closes for um, up to $10,000 worth of grants for um, fertility treatment. So whether you are looking for um, IVF or even adoption, if it's, um, domestic adoption, we can support with that. So that is what I do here with, uh, with the Cade Foundation. And of course, we have fundraisers all throughout the year uh, to support families. We have a lot of fun doing it. We had, to, we had to make that shift to virtual, but we're still pushing along. We're still hosting all of our events, five events, actually not even throughout the year, June through November. So it's, it, we're, we're coming up on crunch time. Once June hits, it's just boom, 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 raising money, raising money, raising money. Um, but it's all for an amazing cause. Our founders have an amazing story about their overcoming journey and how they just wanted to be able to give back to one family, just one family. And here we are, uh, over 137 families later, still giving back, still raising money. Um, and it's just an awesome feeling. Wow, that is awesome and amazing, especially this is something that so many women are dealing with and going through. So definitely great to know that there's programs out there like this that can help women. Awesome. Absolutely. Well, we're here to talk about pivotal moments. So, yes. you know, there's always probably probably hundreds of pivotal moments, if not more than that. Um, and I always crack up because people are like, I didn't know which one to pick, you know. Uh, but which one did you want to talk about today as a pivotal moment for you? Ah, uh, well, since we're, since we're talking about families, um, I'll tell you a little bit about mine. I have uh, five amazing, beautiful, wonderful children. Uh, two of them I've birthed. And um, those two that I birthed, uh, one of them is my rainbow baby. So um, I did have a, a miscarriage in between my two girls, which um, that was a, it, it, was a, it was a tough moment. Um, I do know that um, my, my story is, is not, well, nobody's story is the, is the same. So, uh, but, but it, is, it is my story. Uh, but the point is for me, as far as my pivotal moment, after giving birth to my uh, my first daughter, I was just in awe. I was just in awe of this amazing little creature and, uh, you know, this, this beautiful blessing. And I said, I just want to stay home. I don't want to go back to work. <laughs> and my husband said, well, <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> but um enjoy these nine weeks. <laughs> so I, um, I uh, unfortunately did return to work. And then, as I said, I, I became pregnant again. After, um, after about 10 weeks, uh, we lost that one. And then wound up getting pregnant again with, um, with my rainbow baby. And I went through that same thing again, because my daughters, they're, they're 19 months apart. So we were oh. fortunate to be able to, to keep things moving. Yeah. Uh, but um, after she was born, I was just like, I do not, my daughter, you know, my oldest daughter, she had been in daycare since she was two months old. I was like, I don't want to do this again. Um, and so I talked to my husband again, and he was just like, eh. I don't think so. We, we, we have goals we're trying to reach. We, you know, we need this income. And the bottom line is I was at a place where I, I, I had that good government job and it just wasn't good to me. It's, it's not what I wanted. Um, I was truly in it for the money at that point. And I just said, I don't want to, I don't want to live my life like this. I don't want to stay in this place. And as my daughters got older and my oldest one started school, 
I said, I just, I want to be able to be the, the PTA mom. I want to be the class mom. I want to go on field trips without asking for permission. I want to, I want that freedom to be mom. And granted, you know, I did have flexibility with my job. It wasn't a, a huge task to take off, but it was just the principle. It was the, it was the commute. I had about a 40 minute commute each way, you know, dropping my daughters off at daycare. My husband was in school at the time. And I was just like, it's just too much. Yeah. It's too much. Um, so we finally agreed when around the time my youngest daughter turned four, um, we finally said, it's uh, let's go ahead and do it. So I made that transition and it was such a blessing for me. I'm not going to say there was zero trials because there were some trials. However, um, it was just an amazing opportunity for me to make that transition into being able to focus on being a mom, being able to focus on building a business, being able to focus on other things that I was able to do and love to do. And, and honestly, that's partly how I found the Cade Foundation, because I was able to make that transition and, and be able to give my time to the things that really uh, made me feel alive and made me feel valued and, and truly find things that I enjoy. Wow, I love that. And, you know, I'm a firm believer that transparency and when people share their stories, that it gives the next person permission to, to, to embrace their own experience. And I love what you're sharing because so many women go through that struggle. You know, mm -hmm. they go through that struggle as far as, you know, I want to stay home with the kids or I want to do this or I'm just not feeling fulfilled. Yes, it's great money, but I'm not feel I, I don't feel like this is what I'm supposed to do. So mm -hmm. I love that you're sharing that. And, and I know women watching will be like, yes, that's what I needed to hear. That's the permission I needed. So that is awesome. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, so, you know, as we talk about pivotal moments, um, there's always that thing that everything kind of pivots around and, and you know, some, some th sometimes we'll call it your why or, you know, what motivates you, but what would you say in, in making that pivot that you learned is the unchangeable, important thing that everything else was, will center around that? Ooh, <sighs> I think the number one lesson I learned and I want to teach is the, the power of owning who you are mm -hmm. and truly, truly, truly getting in a space of being unapologetic about it. Um, there are so many things that we know about ourselves. There are so many things that we allow to uh, just be or certain things that we're taught in life and we just kind of go along with it because this is what my parents did. This is what um, I was taught in my church. This is, this is, this is how I was raised. And we, and you know, this is just who I am. And, 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 and some of that is true, but there's so many places where we need to allow ourselves to grow and to think for ourselves, not just think of what we were taught, if that makes sense. So, um, so for me, it was, it was being able to, you know, going through that experience, understanding that, you know, for the most part, I, I had a great life, you know, as far as uh, the neighborhood I grew up with, my, you know, my parents, they, they've had a healthy marriage and they've been married for 40 plus years. And, uh, you know, I went to private schools and, you know, a, a semi-sheltered life. So I, I was able to go on vacations and I, and I had what I needed. And I was always that, that, that nice girl, you know, that, that pleasant girl, that, that professional girl. So I, it, it wasn't, I didn't have to, I didn't have the struggle life. Um, so I was used to things just kind of being handed to me, not, mm, not handed to me, but I was used to being able to obtain things without a major struggle. Okay. Yeah. Um, I naturally did well in school. Um, Every job that I had, I just kind of naturally fell into promotions. It wasn't like I had to earn and prove and 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 write these. You know, it, it, so that yeah. I didn't have that kind of experience. Yeah. So once I made that transition to leaving the the corporate world and uh, you know starting business on my own and raising this family, and and that's when I really started to learn who Kristen is and and where are Kristen's weakness is. Where has Kristen been kind of coasting through life? And, and having to be honest with myself with that, being able to honor the things that I did well, 
but have to, having to own the things that I needed to work on. And, and what did that look like? Because for me, the thing that I always look at is the fact that I have two little girls. That's that's four little female eyes that are watching everything that I do. And I mean everything wow. that I do. So I have to be mindful of that. What do I want to teach them? Not just through my words and my lesson plans, but what is that I want them to, to catch simply by watching what mommy does, simply by how mommy shows up in life, how mommy dresses, how mommy carries, how, how, how confident mommy feels in herself. Um, that, is, that was important to me because I had to start making some tweaks and I had to make, make some, some adjustments there. So just being able to own who I am and being able to say, this is who I am and this is who I'm striving to be, regardless of what my, my, my parents or my siblings or my, my former professors or, or my pastor or, or whoever else around me, whatever they think I'm supposed to be or whether they agree or disagree, I got to go down this road because this is, this is what I feel God is calling me to do. Woo. I love it. I love it. And it, it, as you were talking, there were just so many things that were coming to mind, but it's so true, you know, regardless of whatever our background is, it, it can be so easy to just fall into what's expected. And whether that's positive or negative, whatever that reality perceived reality is you know we fall into that and and i and i agree we have to take that time and see who we we really are you know and and i and yeah so <laughs> there was just a lot that i was like yes i get it i get it mm -hmm. oh my goodness so switching gears a little bit we always have the part where we talk about adjustments because when we think about pivoting and like you said, your why and all of that, that's kind of, you know, positive and that's coming from within. But adjustment sometimes, adjustment can be defined as adapting to an uncomfortable circumstance or situation. So mm -hmm. can you talk about a time where you had to make an adjustment rather than the pivot? What yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. So, <laughs> continuing that story. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, as I said, when I left that 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 good government job, mm -hmm. I was I was in a space. I had um, completed my master's degree in counseling psychology, and I said, "Yes, I'm going to be this relationship coach. I got a certification in in coaching, and this is what I'm going to do." And uh, and that was my focus. However, as I said, there were some areas where I needed to grow. I needed to put a little extra effort. Uh, so, so basically building a business was not as, as uh, lucrative as, as I wanted it to be starting off. Uh, so I was in this place where I said, well, I left this, this good government salary and I have these two little children and we have put them in private school. Um, I got to figure something out here. I got to figure something out. Um, so yeah, so I had to make this adjustment from wanting to be this entrepreneur and, and business builder, but, but owning the fact that I mentally wasn't there yet. So I, I, was, I was in a place where I'm trying to build myself up mentally get the education that I need, but also making sure my, my family is taken care of because my husband, he was still working his full-time job and, and, and doing what he needed to do. Um, and, and, you know, we were okay, but I, it, it was the, the income was not coming in the way I needed it to. And I had to, I had to, I had to be honest with myself about the fact that yes, this is, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this new life that I've, that I've created. However, financially, we're not going to be able to make it much longer in this space. So I had to accept the fact that I did need to um, find additional employment to make sure we, we did what we needed to do. And, and honestly, for us, you know, it's, it's truly been a blessing. And for me, um, I, 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 I truly give it all to God because he has continued to, to watch over us and keep us, you know, every time I felt like, Lord, what's about to happen? Then my husband would get a promotion or we wow. would, you know, we would get some type of blessing and I'm just like, okay, Lord, 
all right, you keep letting me know you're here. So I'm going to keep going. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah. 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 It's not, yeah. it's not the million dollar lottery ticket that I was asking for. Right. However, <laughs> however, I'll take what you give me. Right. You know, right. Know that you're yeah. still with me. Yeah. So, you know, and, and, that, and that's my belief and that's, that's my story. So, um, so as I said, just being able to make that adjustment and being, being humble enough to be able to say, you know what, I, this is just what I need to do for now. Um, and, and that's okay. And, and as I said, that's actually how part of the way I, I found um, the Cade Foundation, because I was in a place where I said, hey, I need to do something in, in addition. Um, yeah. And then I, and then I wound up staying. I've been here for, I guess, about four years now. Wow. Um, so, you know, so, it, and it's, and it's been a blessing because all the things that I've been able to learn here um, and, you know, just different tools, different skills, different, different opportunities. Um, again, it's, it's all been a blessing. I feel it's all been ordered. Um, so many new connections and, and, and truly just, just life lessons and understandings about business, about families. Um, it's just, it's just been amazing. So, um, so yeah, I, I, you know, that, that, that financial piece, you know, it, it, it hits you, it hits you, <laughs> um, but we're overcomers in that area as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, Kristen, I'm actually so glad that you shared that because, you know, a lot of people feel like maybe they're failing or like a failure if, you know, they ventured out, they, they wanted to be this entrepreneur and now they need extra income or maybe even have to go back to, you know, corporate world for a bit. And sometimes people tend to look at it like I failed, you know, like mm -hmm. I had this dream and it didn't work, but what you're sharing shows, no, it's not a failure. You still can be on your path. You still can fulfill your mission. In fact, this can add substance and add sauce to your ultimate goal. So I love that you shared that. Like you said, you had to make some adjustments. It wasn't necessarily comfortable in the beginning, but you're able to see how this has played a role even in the bigger picture. And I love that. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. Well, as we come to the end of our conversation, <laughs> what final words, nuggets, whatever it is that you want to share with our viewers who are watching? Ah, <sighs> can you just love yourself? I mean, like, like seriously, I need you to love yourself. We, we go, and especially, I, can I, I just need to talk to the ladies for a minute. Yes. Man, y'all are cool. Y'all are cool. Somebody else will address y'all, but I just need to talk to the ladies right now. We need, we truly just need to love ourselves and, and give ourselves grace um, and just know that you really are enough. And I know so many people are sharing that message. I know you've heard it, but you have to live it. You have to believe it. You have to understand that no matter where you are in your journey, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, financially, it, you're okay. You are exactly where you need to be. And all as long as you are continuing to grow, as long as you are continuing to dream, as long as you are continuing to do, you will be fine. You really will. And you have to understand that what you have lived already, the fact that you're still breathing, you have a powerful message. You have a powerful mission. You have a powerful purpose that you have to believe in because there's no way you can convince anybody else that they are worthy if you do not believe it for yourself. So we have to get beyond this place of masking and, and putting on this superwoman cape and, and trying to front and, and make people believe that I can handle it. I can do it. I can be it. I just, I'm, I'm fine. You're not fine. You will be fine. But you have to be able to acknowledge those moments when you need some support. Acknowledge those moments when you just don't have it all together and be able to trust the people that you say that you trust in that small circle of yours in order to truly release and be honest about what you need and allow people to pour into you so that you can flourish and grow and be all that you are called to be in the life that you choose. The life that you choose for yourself that is designed and purposed by God. So... Um, and and if, if that's not what you believe, please don't, don't eat the eat the meat, spit out the bones in, at this point. Okay, um, the, the the point is, you you are enough. You really are enough, and you really have to own and love who you are. Period. Mm, sis, 
Wow. I, I have nothing else to I, I have nothing else to add to that. <laughs> I love it. Look, I receive it myself. <laughs> I told you I got the best seat in the house. <laughs> I love oh, awesome. it. Oh, my goodness. Well, Kristen, thank you so much for, for coming to Pivotal Moments and sharing your Pivotal Moments and, and chatting with us and really giving that motivation and inspiration. That is something that we all can can take away. So thank you so much. And, and also just for what you're doing. Again, mm -hmm. that's a, an area that so many women struggle with. So again, just appreciate all that you bring. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, once again, another amazing episode that you've been watching here at Pivotal Moments. Be sure to follow Kristen. And, and of course, you see the link showing so you can find out more information about those grant programs that she spoke about. And as always, thank you so much for your support and for tuning in to Pivotal Moments with Lolita. We will see you next time.